Hey everyone, Ian King here, editor at Smart Profits Daily with your weekly market insights video. Joining me this week, my friend and colleague, Brian Christopher. Brian, I got a question for you. I want you to go back in a time machine today, take yourself back 20 years ago to the days when you used to wear flannel shirts and go to Pearl Jam concerts and And tell me, and you had hair, (laughs) tell me what is the one piece of advice or the one asset class that you would have told your younger self to buy in 2000. Remember, you can't say Bitcoin because Bitcoin didn't come around in 2010, but what major asset class do you wish you owned in 2000? Yeah, I feel, I feel a little bad about this because I know the answer, but, um, but I, do, I do believe in it. So I do, want to, uh, I do want to tell people that back then and maybe even still today, they should think about owning some gold incredible i know i never would have thought of that i would have said you buy stocks you buy tech stocks some tech stocks have outperformed but in general i want to share this chart with readers gold is up 500 percent since the year 2000 it's outperformed treasuries and the s p 500 amazingly enough treasuries have actually been a better bet than the s p 500 because they haven't had as much drawdowns and they've had just steady growth over the last 20 years gold has shown the most volatility but It's also giving you the greatest returns over the last 20 years. I mean, who would have thought those gold bugs were right all along, Brian, huh? Well, and remember, it was kind of a, you had a lost decade of stocks in the 2000s after the, uh, after the dot-com run-up. And interestingly, though I know it doesn't apply to a lot of uh, tech stocks, those, that data includes, uh, includes dividends. So, um, I mean, it's, it, it, it is, it is, it is, it is amazing. Uh, gold had quite a decade from uh, in, in the 2000s. I mean, it's crazy. You, you didn't have to do any due diligence on stocks. You didn't have to worry about earnings. You just had to go out and buy a lot of this yellow metal and you would have crushed everything else. I mean, who would have thought that two decades ago? But, you know, let's turn to today. And we've seen a big rally in gold just in the last year and a half. And we've had kind of a blow off top, I would say, in the last month or so. What do you make of gold right now, Brian? Is this something that our viewers should start thinking about more? Is this something they should put in their portfolio? What are your thoughts on that? I think, I think they should definitely think about it. So what we had in early August, gold closed at about $2,063 an ounce. And there's a, you know, we're human. So we have this, we have this thing where once it hits 2000, we're like, whoa, you know, and it, and it went above it a little bit. And, and then that was it. But the thing that we have here today is we have, we have low interest rates. And uh, Fed Chairman Powell has said that we will continue to have low interest rates for an extended period, which some people have taken to mean 2022, maybe 2023. Mm-hmm. But basically, you're not getting any interest on your cash in the bank. And, and so gold that continues to appreciate, and, and right now with these lower interest rates that has a floor under it uh, price-wise, is 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 really worth is really worth considering. It's really worth your time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. And you know, I want to pull up this chart right now, just of the daily chart. And you can see in mid July when that first rally really started that took us over two thousand. We've had a pullback back right back to that level. So the the breakout really started in mid July at about eighteen ten an ounce, and then we've seen support at about eighteen fifty an ounce, and and now it's bouncing. So I agree with you. The idea that we're going to have easy money for longer than most people expect is going to be a driving narrative of gold. Now, Brian, I got to ask you this question because there's just one thing I don't understand. Now I'm not a gold bug, so let me preface this by saying. I believe you should own some gold. I don't think it should be you know, overweight in your portfolio, but I believe there is a case for owning a percent of gold in your portfolio. But why are so many gold bugs so anti-Fed? Wouldn't, if you were bullish on the gold asset class, wouldn't you be like rah, rah, Fed, print as much money as possible? Because that's going to make gold go up. If we end the Fed, is there any sense that the price of gold will go up if we're not using it as a store of value, but we're using it to transact? I mean, what do you make of that? I, I really don't get that conundrum. It, 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 you're right, because the Fed, the Fed has helped. Uh, the Fed, I mean, in, in my opinion, when we're in you know, difficult times, uh, you know, the, the, the market interest rate wouldn't be, wouldn't be zero because uh, it, would be, it would be a lot different. And so, and so the fact that, that we have these lower rates, we've got we've got um support you know the exact same support that i that i spoke of earlier another way to think about the gold price is that it often moves inversely to the dollar so the us dollar so 
as we have these, these Fed created Fed funds rate that are zero or even negative on a real basis, they are certainly helping people who, who, uh, who own gold and you know, gold, gold related stocks. Yeah, and, and Brian, you know, another argument I hear that the millennials make, they make a lot of arguments, those millennials, right? But the no other argument is, you know, gold is like your dad and your grandfather's store of value. Like we've got Bitcoin now. Like, is there, do you think that the supply or the value of Bitcoin could ever surpass gold, which is I think has an $8 trillion market cap right now? Or is there gonna be a narrowing of the spread between the two perhaps? Uh, well, I mean, certainly if you think about Bitcoin, if you think about Bitcoin and you think about gold, the Bitcoin supply is capped, right? But we can continue to produce more gold. It's become much more difficult in these recent years to even, to even find significant amounts of gold. Uh, obviously we have to find it to pull it out of the ground, but theoretically we can, we can increase the supply of gold. Whereas, you know, once we get to 21 million, we're done, we're done with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But you know, there are ways to transact in gold. There are, you know, companies out there where if you have the basically if you have the gold uh, stored then then you can then you can uh, you know you could have a you could have a, a credit card or a debit card and just uh, transact and, and deduct from your balance that way in coordination with you know MasterCard and Visa and uh, and uh, effectively effectively uh, spend your gold if you will. Yeah, you, you, you say there's a finite supply but I, I heard that Elon Musk might start mining asteroids for gold I don't know if that's ever going to come to fruition in our lifetime but that would well, be quite a sight. It, it, I mean, was that did that? But uh, did that come up in the uh, in the battery day at all? Like any of the? Uh, <laughs> no, no it's funny. We did talk about battery day last week, but he didn't mention their uh, you know specific uh, plans for mining asteroids for gold. But I just bring that up because you were talking about there's a finite supply. We always find more more of it, which in case you know you haven't recognized there's gold out in outer space somewhere it's it's just how do we go obtain that gold where is your point there can only be 21 bitcoins but my pushback to that argument is yeah there can only be 21 million bitcoins but there can also be uh you know litecoin or other different alternative cryptocurrencies that bitcoin doesn't have to be the end all be all i mean in fact in in the crypto markets i think that ethereum will wind up having more value to that protocol than bitcoin just because it has many more use cases so but uh, the, Go ahead. And then, well, there's, and there's also the concept of, I don't know, to me, it's like, why does it have to be one versus the other? You know what I mean? Like uh, Bitcoin and gold to me have a lot more in common than say maybe, uh, you know, I don't know, Bitcoin and the, and the dollar or something like that in terms of, in terms of the fact that they are more, um, more, more rare. Um, yeah. And so but it's, it's like, but it's also the, like the belief system, right? So we value gold because we've said it has value for the last 5,000 years, but in reality, gold has very few industrial purposes. Silver has industrial purposes. Nickel has industrial purposes. But gold, you know, it's a form of jewelry. And it's, it's, and there are some cultures which value it a lot more than others, such in India, where a, a higher percentage of their household wealth is stored in gold rather than stocks or even real estate, which I find also to be quite fascinating because we don't think about gold like in the United States, like they do in other countries. And, and I think that India is a big driver because you're talking about a billion people that are upwardly mobile and moving into the middle class with more assets and more buying power. And I think that's also another driving narrative for gold as well. Any thoughts on that? Well, uh, I mean, you're, def you're definitely accurate. I mean, as, as, as India, I mean, China has already become more rich and, uh, and will continue to become more rich, most likely. India has a further way to go in that respect. And both of those cultures, uh, gold is a super important part of, of their lives, of their families. Like this is, this is, this is something to buy and adore. And it, it's, I can't, I can't say never. And I generally try not to say never, but, uh, yeah. you know, in the States, uh, back, you know, at the end of the two thousands, you would see these signs on the side of the road all the time, you know, we'll buy, we'll buy your gold. Right. So then, so then people will just take their now high priced gold that's in, on their neck and their necklaces and, uh, and, 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 and sell it. And, uh, that's, that's, I believe that's less likely. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's all I'm doing now for like, uh, anniversary presents. It's just 
buying gold that we can store in a safe because it's going to have value at some point more than it does now in the future, given the rally it's had. But, you know, one other question I'm sure viewers are interested in. Let's say you want to add gold exposure to your portfolio and, and you decided on, okay, you want to put 10% in gold. Do you go all in on the metal or should there be some dif you know, diversity between gold and the miners? And if so, is there an ETF that you could possibly recommend that people should look into? Well, the, I mean, just, just to get started, the miners are definitely more, uh, the more risky play. So uh, oh, we love risk. We love risk here, right? If you're, but if you're just getting started, I'd start off with the, with the metal itself. I mean, you can go to a, you can go to a reputable dealer um, and, and, and buy it and, you know, bring it to your house. Obviously you have to store it. Um, but you could also buy an ETF, which is like the, the most notable one would be GLD, mm -hmm. which in fact, over the course of this year, it has almost doubled in value, even though uh, year to date the the gold price is up about twenty three percent. So we've seen we've seen some some excess demand for gold during the course of the year. Another one that it, that serves a very similar purpose is Sprott's Physical Gold Trust, which is P H Y S. And the okay. thing that I know about 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 Sprott's vehicle was that um, on August sixth, the gold price peaked at about two thousand sixty three dollars an ounce. Since then, the gold price was down about 8.6%, but the value of the Sprott vehicle is actually down a little bit less than that, which infers that, that people continued to buy. That's pretty attractive that people find a, like an ETF or a vehicle like that to be so attractive that they, that they keep buying even in the face of uh, some falling prices. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic. I'm, I'm not sure buying physical gold is the right approach, but you can't put it in a retirement account, right? So you get one of these ETFs and then you don't have to worry about storing it or anything like that. You can just own it in your 401k or your Roth IRA. So it sounds like the ETF is, is really the, the play. Also, there, if you go there to one are, of the There are routes, dealers. for example, with the Sprott vehicle where you could actually take ownership of the physical gold if you wanted to, but it requires a pretty serious account balance. So for most people, that's not going to be applicable, but just know that it is, it is available. You could be buying an ETF en route to a, a securing, securing physical gold. Oh, fair enough. Well, You've watched what we had to say today. If, uh, please leave a comment. Let us know if you're buying gold or you're buying any ETFs. We'd love to hear from you. For myself and my friend, Brian Goldfinger Christopher, I want to wish everyone a safe and happy weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you.